composite functions, this means we're going to put two functions together in any sort of way that's dictated by the question. So we could do things like fg of x, which means that we do f of g of x. So that means we do the g function on x first, and then we do f on the answer that we got out of the g function. So these are easier to explain with examples. If we want to do fg of 2, we would put 2 into g. That gives us an answer of 4. And then we take that 4 and we put it into the f function, which gives us an answer of 11. Okay, next if we did f of f of 1, that means we're going to do f of 1 first, that gives us 5. Then we put that 5 into f again, which gives us 13. Uh, just bear in mind, if you see something written like f squared, that means f of f of x, and f cubed would be 3 f's of x. We could also do g of f of 3. That means we're going to work out f of 3 first, which is 9, and then put that into g, which gives us 81. And we could do this in general terms as well. So we've got g of f of x, we want to write that as one function. So that means we're going to do g of 2x plus 3, put that into the g function, and then it gets squared. Okay, let's do some more examples. Um, now, usually you're going to have some domain restrictions on your function that you need to bear in mind as you do the, the questions. So, we're going to find a few of um, the following. Okay, so the first one, we're doing f of g of 3. So if we put 3 into g, 3 plus 2 is 5. So then we need to put that 5 into f, and we get an answer of 25. Okay, part b. We've got three things going. So the first one is to put 2 into f, and that gives us 4. Then we'll put 4 into f, which gives us 16. Then we'll put 16 into g, and we get 18. Each time we're working outwards from that central bracket. Now, f of f of minus 1, you need to spot something here. So we're looking at the the function f and its inverse. Now, by its very definition, the inverse gets you back to where you started from. So if you do the function followed by its inverse, that's the same as doing a times 3 followed by divide 3. So you'll get the same thing that you started with. So in this case, it's a 7. Now that's a, a really good thing to be able to spot to help you do questions faster if those sorts of things come up. And sometimes the functions are really complicated. You don't actually have to work out the composite function itself. You can just recognise that it cancels each other out. So g of f of x, we're doing this in general terms now. So f of x is x squared, so we're doing g of x squared. That means we're going to take that x squared and put it into the place of x on the g function. So that becomes x squared plus 2. We also need to think about the domain on that. Now the domain restriction on f is that x has to be greater than or equal to 0. If it's at 0 then we did it, and then we did the squared on it, then the, the smallest it could possibly be for coming out of f of x is 0. So then going into the g, g we're told x has to be greater than or equal to minus 2. Well, we we already know the smallest it's going to be is the 0, so that will be covered off as well. So as long as we keep x greater than or equal to 0, both of those will be satisfied. Okay, the inverse of f of minus 1 of x. And we can do the inverse on this one, even though it's an x squared, because we've got that domain restriction of x being greater than or equal to 0, this now is a one-to-one -one function because we're not including any of the negative square roots because that's not a possible uh, 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 value to go into f of x. So the inverse function is just going to be the positive square root of x, not including the negatives. And our domain has to be that x is um, part of the real numbers, and it's greater than or equal to zero. And we can tell that by thinking about what the range of f of x would be. Whatever f of x could come out to be would give the domain for the inverse. So the smallest that x squared could possibly be is zero, so therefore the domain for going into our inverse would be greater than or equal to zero. We'll do the inverse on g as well. 
So this would be x minus 2, it's a fairly simple one. And again, considering the domain on this one, x belongs to the real numbers, but also we need to say where it's got that limit on it. So on g of x, the the smallest that x could be going into it is minus 2. Now that if we put that minus 2 in, minus 2 plus 2 would give us a 0. So the range of g of x is 0. So the smallest number that could come out of it would be 0. Therefore, the smallest number that could go into the inverse function is also 0.